Just two shots and a bit of Photoshop magic creates this. I want to show you how simple it is to create a powerful spec app which lasts less than 15 seconds. Too often I see amazing creations from other creators, but there's just too much crammed into the ad. If you can get the finished video in under 15 seconds, then not only will it keep the viewer more entertained, yes. it also yes. leaves them wanting more, which for a brand is great. If you missed the previous upload on lighting this scene, then I suggest you watch that video straight after this one. By limiting the amount of shots you take, it allows the edit to work harder. We can keep it fresh looking, high intensity, without the risk of repetition. So here are my two shots in their raw state straight out of camera. Nothing special, in fact, pretty boring, right? Well, we're gonna change that now. Here's the original tight shot. And here it is used in the edit. All we have done here is added a speed ramp to rotate the can quicker, which then slows to its original speed as the front artwork is revealed. To do this inside Premiere, all you need to do is right click on your clip, go to show clip keyframes, time remapping, speed. This now shows a line on the clip, which you can add markers to using the pen tool. Click where you would like a change of speed to occur, then drag up the line to increase the speed percentage until you get something you're happy with. This is great, but it's a little harsh of a speed change. We want to smooth out the transition, and we can do this by dragging the markers left and right and adjusting the handles to create more of a curved line. The same technique can be applied to our wide shot. If we compare the original to the edit, you can see the speed ramp in action here. Only difference is, we have started the speed from slow to fast. But before we apply the speed adjustments on this clip, let's first tackle the obvious issue, the bass. In Photoshop, all we need to do is create a platform for the can to sit on. This will hide the rotating device and give an overall look to suit the brand. I decided on a concrete texture and coloured it green to match the scene. Save this as a single layer, import it and then position it to hide the existing base. Once happy, lock it all in by nesting all these layers into one. This will allow you to apply any actions such as zooms, crops and rotations to the whole scene. So now we have our wide shot and base nested, let's apply the same technique as before. Right click, show clip keyframes, time remapping, speed. Select the pen tool, now choose the position to add our speed change. It does require a bit of experimenting to get the look you want. So be patient and adjust your speed increase and marker positioning until you get something you like. So that's our two camera clips done for now. Let's move on to the Photoshop magic. What I wanted in the middle part of the ad was for a camera move to get into the detail of the artwork. And for me, the best option was to fake it. By going on the brand website, I found a banner image which had the same art design used on the can. Save it out, open it up in Photoshop, go to image, image size, and scale the file up with preserve details 2.0 selected. This will try to retain the detail without making the file a pixelated mess. Next, we want to try and make this image look similar to how it does in the film. If we look at our wide shot, you can see we need to add highlights to the left and right, which is simply done by creating a couple of white rectangles, Gaussian blur, set the layer mode to screen and change the opacity to get close to the reference. Next, we can see the exposure is darker in the center. So let's add a brightness adjustment layer and mask only the part you want it to affect. Reduce the brightness until you get something you're happy with and then blend it better by adding a Gaussian blur to the layer mask. We should probably add some droplets to make the image look consistent. Just a quick Google search and you'll find plenty. Ideally find one that is a transparent PNG so it will show the artwork through right away. Set the blending mode to hard light and scale the droplets to match the reference more. Duplicate and position to fill the shot. There's one last technique I like to do which helps make the artwork seem less perfect and that's by introducing a noise layer below everything else. So make a new layer, fill it 50% grey, go to filter, noise, add noise, and crank up the percentage to what looks right with your scale. Make sure it's on monochromatic and hit return. Now set the blending mode to overlay, which will allow all the artwork below to show through. By adding this layer, it creates imperfections and texture, which would be in the print of the can if you were to look closely. So here is our finished image, which we can save out as a JPEG and import into Premiere. Next, we need to blend all three elements together. The first film section needs to punch into our new image, and then that file needs to zoom out to reveal the wide shot. To do this, I use an effect called Transform. In a nutshell, it allows you to add keyframes with a realistic motion blur. 
this does become quite processor heavy, so try to keep cool and just let the computer do its magic. So on the first shot, I have added this effect and within the transform controls, place some keyframes on the scale and position to zoom in closer to the snake. To get the motion blur, make sure you adjust the shutter angle. The higher the degree, the more blur. I like to keep it at 180 myself. Now we are ultra close in the artwork, we want to position the fake image in the same location. Again, add the transform effect to the image so any keyframes will include the motion blur. Best way to line up the image is to overlap the layers, turn down the opacity on the image, remember to use the position adjustments inside the transform controls. Once lined up, you can set the opacity back to 100%. Now it's time to take the viewer on a journey by adding keyframes to the position, scale, and rotation. Start to move the image around to focus on some key areas. I wanted to start with the snake, make my way past the crow to the skull, then quickly sweep back up to the brand name before zooming out to the wide shot. This part is very trial and error. Experiment with keyframe positioning and try different settings on the keyframes themselves. For example, right click on one and have a play with changing it from linear to one of the other Bezier options. This will cause the camera to sway more rather than hard jerky movements. But be warned, your computer will hate you. So to get from the image back to the wide shot, do the same as before. Overlap the layer on the footage, change the opacity, and start to line up your final keyframes with the real footage. I wanted it to be more seamless, so first, I actually added the transform effect to the wide shot, scaled and rotated it in, and keyframed it to rotate and zoom out back to its original state. Then with the image file, I matched the ending keyframes to line up visually with the footage. It's not perfect, but as this happens so quickly, it's hard to see the droplet position change, for example. And finally, yes, finally. One last effect which was so simple but helped to blend in the image with the footage. You can see it's pretty obvious the change here, so to blend that more, I just placed the same image over the top, lined it up with the scale and rotation on the exact moment the clip changes to the image, set the blend mode to linear dodge which hides anything black, and makes the colours vivid. Add a Gaussian blur, and as the action takes place, just increase the scale so it pops off the cam and then keyframe the opacity to fade to zero. Now when you play it back, it hides the cut, but it also adds an extra element for use at the end of the film, with the simple idea to make the artwork pop off the can and then get sucked back in as the can rotates. Same as before, transform effect on the image, blending mode set to screen this time, keyframe the starting scale and position, then increase the scale to make the artwork pop off. Once the can has completed its rotation, the artwork can be keyframed to fly back into the can. And that, my friends, is how we make a pretty epic ad with just two shots and a bit of Photoshop magic. Remember to check out my previous video on lighting this scene, which you can find a link for in the description. And if you want to see how Photoshop can be used with even greater results for your product films, then make sure to watch this video on screen now. Keep on experimenting, would love to see what you create in the comments below, and I'll catch you on the next video.